Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, wishing you a happy and healthy start to this nice little Saturday morning over here from a very overcast Helsinki, Finland. I could use a little bit of that myself, however, as I'm feeling a bit under the weather, but that's okay. This video is going to be relatively easy and a little bit on the shorter side. Hopefully, we'll see if the achievement is, uh, is succeeded at the end of this one, as that's always become a fucking meme of itself. Anyways, with that said, let's uh, focus now on the Crownchain application, which we found at app.crownchain.net. And what do we see that is different over the past few days here? Well, several things actually. Bitcoin dominance continues to falter here below. 40% officially now. I do want to check in on the Bitcoin dominance chart today. We were uh, approaching rapidly a very macro area that would anticipate a bounce from that region relatively soon. So it would be warranted to go check in on that and see if we are uh, actually at that area or not. Anyways, fear and greed index out of 27, pretty much the lows that we've seen over the past almost a year now, which is rather telling in and of itself. And then on top of that, we do see that the open interest over here has actually broken below that $9 billion buried to the downside. So we do see a bit of a change behavior there, specifically for Bitcoin. And that's going to play into the Bitcoin analysis for the week to come. However, today, well, enjoy it, my friends. Enjoy it. I'll just leave it at that. Top 10 best coins, top 10 worst coins. We got Polygon, Near, po Near Protocol, Sushi Swap, Ethereum Classic, Polkadot, Cardano back on it as well. Bakery token, the food tokens are at it again. Graph, Kusama, Phantom, all on the winners list. Big numbers there too, all in double digits or more Polygon. Uh, the main beneficiary of that of 54 spot 19 percent holy shit powerful polygons what the hell is that thing don't know don't care but very 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 good anyways as far as the top 10 worst coins go we got bitcoin diamond hedera hashcraft verge ravane theta theta fuel what the hell compound ontology decred and digibyte all on the losers list but really only it's uh bitcoin dominant hedera hashcraft having big bad downs the other ones are more or less uh, par for the course in, in cryptocurrency land of course anyways into the mark data tab we go let's see what we got going on over here and yes indeed okay so we can see that on the line chart very 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 clearly we are not just retesting the prior low of this formation that bitcoin's been in for the past few months here but we're actually um but we're actually well this low specifically is a lower low in comparison to the last low that we had back on over here in march 25th now this goes all the way up to i believe a two day or a three day on bitcoin's uh, spot price action chart this is not the same on cme however if i recall properly and then more importantly we got our lower high over here from our last high or from from uh, from our last high in april uh mid-april that is so it is starting to look a little more menacing especially with a little bit of downside continuation overall but does that mean that i immediately look for some downside immediately from this current range that bitcoin's at no i mean basically the same thing as yesterday looking for a bit of a bounce bounce out of this region to kind of spoil the surprise right now but more importantly with open interest right here we can see that the formation is completely negated or it's not necessarily negated it's just we have a change of behavior more importantly so that is indicative of something new occurring from this and if something new is occurring from this then it is time to let go of past ideas and be open to new ones on top of that we do that the funny rate over here is still pretty much at parity i mean nothing none of this is is really all that crazy in fact all we see is ftx yeah okay all, all these changes right here are pretty much at uh, not point out one so it's not anything too crazy right there um and that would be uh well not so telling right now actually we need to see that accompanied by a few other things which we don't really see right now anyways uh bitcoin dom is just a straight shot down for the past i mean realistically like half a year now altcoin is just really being a mat on a massive massive tear and with that in mind i think it's time to go into the price section charts i'm actually gonna start off with something a little bit different today ethereum bitcoin pairing right here almost hitting our next macro level right around eight and a half billion or is uh, almost said eight and a half billion eight and a half million that is satoshi's very 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 close here we can make a bit of a range i wouldn't um, i wouldn't mind a little bit of a spike up all the way into the deeper end of that at eight spot seven six million satoshis but overall this is a target that we've had for a very long time going all the way back to i think january or february over this region over here as soon as ethereum did put in the week reversal i was bearish the whole way through of course and didn't switch on until we get the week reversal but that is why i do have these sorts of rules for more long-term plays because well we are looking at a yeah, we are looking at a three-year long accumulation right here and so this is what you can kind of expect for that now to put it bluntly what i do i think that this is going to stop out right here for forever and this will never go higher no in fact quite quite the contrary but i would be looking for a major pullback at the very least on medium term time frames and very likely higher term time frames as well i mean ethereum can play all the way back down to six million satoshis and really not do anything uh structurally um uh disingenuous towards its current formation and i'd still be long-term bullish on this actually targeting the next major moves up towards the next macro regions which would be right around here at about basically 0.1 a critical level and then of course if uh if it starts to exceed that region then we start to 
to look at basically prior time highs. Uh, I don't see any real reason why not to. And with the fundamental, with the underlying fundamentals in Ethereum, uh, kind of uh, taking a bit of a twist with this new EIP 1559. I do think that is relevant to kind of call that out because that actually is something that's very tangible. It's not like a fundamental in the way that a lot of people use fundamentals like, oh, we got a new mascot for our shitty coin. It's like, no, this is actually a deflationary asset now or seemed seeming to be uh, pending that new change. Anyways, uh, I'll let other people explain uh, stuff like that because they are much more geared towards it than I. But with that in mind, let's go check out our momentum also just right here. And yes, you know, everything is still showing bullish, uh, at least short term continuation. But keep in mind that we are at absolute critical levels right now with the ADX DMI. We have not seen these levels on the DMI plus ever since uh, realistically March 2017. And that was, of course, <laughs> your massive high way the hell on over here. Now you can see that this high right here, while it did put in a major pullback and, uh, and consolidated for about two months, it looks like it did eventually continue on to new ultimate highs after that. In fact, not just new ultimate highs, but like significantly new ultimate highs. If we measure this out, that's about a 200% gainer right there. It doesn't look too much on a logarithmic chart, of course, but that is, well, I would say that's very much relevant. Of course, everyone's uh, fair to decide for themselves, but overall, I'm kind of looking for something similar here uh, after a little bit more short-term continuation to the upside. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark this area off with a nice little blue box. And it's going to be the blue box of pre peace and prosperity this time because, well, <laughs> I imagine that most people are probably long into this. And on top of that, we do see that weekly MACD is actually not that exaggerated just yet, especially in comparison to the last few mega rallies that we've seen in this asset in May 2017. And, uh, and again, in, in January 2018, both overshadowing what we're currently looking at. So I do look for still long-term continuation off this. Again, it kind of fitting all the puzzle pieces together. Short term, yeah, a little bit more continuation here, probably at 8.5, maybe 8.75. Then a bit of a pullback, probably takes a couple months there. And then I probably would be looking for new all time highs. I don't think that this one's done uh, for forever. I think that this one's probably just takes a medium term break and then gives another try to the upside. Let's go check out Ethereum versus US dollar over here too, because this one's also been a major winner as well. And I believe we closed, did we close a two day last night? Yeah, we did close a two day last night. And what do you know? Very, 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 very good buyback on that. This is why we were kind of saying, hey, you know, yes, things things technically do look a little bit toppy there. However, I'm not looking at this as a top just yet. I'm still actually bullish on this asset, at least for another short-term continuation move. Wouldn't be surprised to see this thing hit officially somewhere around 5,000 bucks, give or take a few hundred. Uh, you know, anywhere around there is completely fine to me. And what do you know? The top side Toronto band is now uh, extending all the way up to about 4,300 and will extend over time as well. But looking at this right here, which technically is not a bullish engulfing dildo, but whenever you see something like this, we have a very obvious bearish dildo right here um, after just basically a massive of uptrend so this is within the context of an uptrend obviously and then immediately after that it gets bought back on up that's that's fucking bullish actually <laughs> that's fucking bullish so i would be having a you know a target back up to about 4300 um basically the prior high of this runner i guess the all-time high right now as well uh, probably coming in uh, to, you know, early portion of this next week, maybe even over the weekend. Uh, definitely possible. But generally speaking, I remain bullish on Ethereum uh, still for another extension of this move. And I imagine once you see the Ethereum Bitcoin pairing hit that next mega resistance that we uh, identified earlier, you're probably going to see this pullback as well. So I would postulate that's going to be somewhere around 5000 um, bucks if I had to guess. And we've gone through this uh, plenty of times already, and I don't really want to do it today. So I will hold off on the long term analysis for now, as I do want to I really do want to make a concerted effort to make this video a little bit on the shorter side uh, in comparison to other videos, but still looking at uh, all momentum monsters. Yes, they are losing momentum right here. However, they do st still remain in bullish posture. And so I think that we got one, one nice little push left in this one. And then of course, the three days is going to be closing tonight as well, I believe. And is that true? That is true. Yes, the 16th. And that's going to be happening at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I'd go as far as saying that if Bic or Bitcoin, if Ethereum closes above the top side of Toronto band here at 4072, basically, we could just say 4100, although technically speaking, a little bit lower than there. And then yes, I'd be looking for new all-time highs uh, coming in the next three days. Uh, the next, uh, what is that? Uh I don't know. I can't do my math right now. 72 hours. Yeah, there you go. Uh, 72 hours, I'd be looking for new all-time highs. And it, within the concept of the two days, well, you know, extremely, extremely likely that we do see that uh, happen probably even within the next 48 hours, if anything. So with all of that in mind, let's pull the momentum monster over here. Looks more or less the same as a three-day. Yes, they are getting very extended. Yes, we are very close to the next sort of uh, short-term, medium-term top of this rally. I'd say more like a medium-term ter term top on this rally. But I think that it's still got one more push here. And then, of course, we got the weekly closing, not tonight, but tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And technically speaking, 
it is somewhat of a doji dildo right now it is still a long you know trading a uh, couple days uh, to go until we actually get the closure on this but one day 19 hours left to go and so far so good as long as it's closing above the top side Toronto band or especially anywhere above you know 4100 I would say that this does set it up for you know just one slight more continuation drive at the very least higher uh, two new ultimize in this case because we're already at ultimize and then well then caution times uh, as you know as I'm kind of uh, alluding to anyways uh, ADX DMI you know still looks good here long term actually uh, this is actually still incredibly healthy and again to put in it to put into context you know the last mega highs that we've seen in 2017 and 2018 were significantly higher than what we see right now so I do look at that as somewhat comparable and long term do I think that the macro rally is done no I don't um, as we kind of identified before uh, five, you know 10,000 bucks is actually not so crazy to look at on this asset I won't go through the rigmarole on this video particularly on how to kind of derive those sorts of potential targets uh, perhaps we'll do that tomorrow but you can also check it in on the long-term analysis playlist as I go into much more detail on that uh, on that playlist specifically for these sorts of uh, you know more fun type of moves that I think the moon boys uh, quite like and I mean, you know, how can you not like that? It's it's a fucking, it's a big number, man. It's really big. I remember when Ethereum was literally below 100 bucks. So <laughs> this is quite the thing. Anyways, I just want to take a quick perusal of the 12 and in, uh, in daily. And what do you know? 12 hours setting up for a bit of a signal on the ADX DMI. I want to see the DMI plus get a positive, uh, positive slope here alongside the ADX creeping up as well. If that happens, I'd feel very comfortable saying uh, Ethereum very likely tests, retest the prior time high in this case, somewhere around 4350 to 4400 region. We also see that uh, 12 hour MACD is giving us a, bull, a, a bit of a bullish reset. Again, extremely extended over here, no doubt about that. But what do we see on top of that? We do see hidden bullish divergence, of course. I mean, the MACD histogram is, off, is like making lows right here, actually in the red zone. And on our last few lows over here, we never even got that. So this is still pretty damn powerful. I think it's got one more move at the very least. And then it's time to hold your breath a little bit and uh, be patient, I imagine. And let's go over here to the daily as well. Same thing here too. Daily top sides right around basically the prior time, a little bit above that 4450-ish region. And uh, again, we're seeing bullish resets here, yes. But I keep an eye on the daily DMI ADX as well as a bit of a uh, as a bit of an intermediary signal here too. Meaning that if we do see the DMI plus get another positive slope alongside the ADX, then I'd be looking for that next push. You know, uh, essentially within that time frame as well. So all of this is looking uh, decent enough for at least another another try. And uh, and then we'll come back to it probably uh, early next week and see where we're at. I want to quickly go over here to our to our other regular charts short term could ethereum pull back down to 3900 or just below 3900 yep uh, i do think so i'd also look at that as an opportunity i think that's completely fine right around the uh, daily 10 simple overall you can see a bit of range is going on right here with i think uh, i actually didn't even go through the trouble of uh, charting them out here apparently um but all i do right here is something very very simple just just uh, just cording this area off right there and as long as ethereum's essentially closing uh, especially like 12 hour and daily totals above about 3900 yeah i'm looking for this one to continue from this current posturing actually uh, we also see daily hidden bullish divergence coming off that last low confirmed i believe yesterday or the day before yeah i mean it, yes it was yesterday taking up the prior high so good on that one and typically speaking in this sort of uh, posturing when you're when you're around your prior optimize that's going to insinuate another uh, at least another retest of your prior optimize and typically speaking in in this market environment new optimize as well so all of those kind of play in with each other which i do like this is coming on declining volatility right here as well which is rather interesting and let's go just go check out on the two day yeah looking looking fine and well to me uh, again that even down to like 38 50 or 3900 would just be a backfill and last open and three day assuming that it closes anywhere above last three day open yeah i'm i'm looking for continuation for the next 72 hours uh very likely to new all-time highs and I'd keep it and I keep an eye on the three day BBWP as very likely getting like the next major high on this one. As we do see anytime it gets around 99 to 100 percentile, it is well, <laughs> well, we are looking for, you know, at the very least sideways price action like we see over here. Now, again, this one did get reaccumulated. And, I mean, that was essentially almost a three X from about just over a thousand bucks where we're at right now. And if we go back to the other few times that we actually see this sort of signature, you know, same thing over here it does play at a nice downside move. I mean, if we measure this one out, let's see, what are we looking at right there about 33 and a quarter what about this one over here that we just identified that was wick to wick about 30 and a half so somewhat similar to each other especially within the context of a general macro uptrend and i would be looking at that as you know a signal of at the very least sideways and probably testing some downside again you know coming down 20 to 30 percent is certainly not out of the question on an asset like this which anyone who's been in this market for a little bit of time now you already know that you already fucking know that's almost par for the course at this point in a in a really crazy diabolical way but in this case right here 
yep, I still do like Ethereum and I still do, uh, and I still remain overall bullish on it. And then we can go over to Bitcoin. And I think Bitcoin's a little bit more interesting today. So we said yesterday on, uh, on the live stream that Bitcoin probably grinds out the blue box territory a little bit and then tries a bit of a rally. And I think that that's, well, that is what we saw yesterday, but I think that's actually also what we're going to see today as well on the weekend. Uh, I'm not looking for Bitcoin to really catastrophically break down until we get a four hour delta closure, even a two hour, I think could work. Let's see. It could probably use a two hour. I think a four hour would just be a little bit more confidence inducing for, uh, for myself as always higher term time frames going to garner more attention and anywhere below 48,000 bucks. Yes, I would look for the next leg down overall. I am very skeptical on Bitcoin right now. While I do think that it will have a bounce out of this region, you could even test all the way back up to 53. Uh, no problem. In fact, I think that it probably does, especially if it takes out this last 51, 300 high right here, uh, extremely likely will do that at the very least, and maybe even a little bit more as well. But I do still think that it is really, really time to be cautious on Bitcoin here. And I imagine this, if, if I'm giving like an opinion here, not necessarily technical analysis, but just an opinion, which, hey, I don't trade my opinion, but you know, if you're kind of looking at all these market pieces playing together, which they do, what would this kind of look like? Well, if Ethereum kind of continues on here, representing a majority of the altcoins, of which there are several others that are making new ultimate runs as well, and they continue for you know the next few days here, maybe into this next week, this whole, this whole next week, and then Bitcoin puts in a bit of a bounce out of this region as well. And then we do see that they all kind of, or sorry, we see that the altcoins kind of top somewhere around you know, Ethereum at 5,000 bucks and then Bitcoin pops up around here. That's at the point where I really would be looking for, you know, potential actual breakdown on Bitcoin. Long-term macro, am I bearish on Bitcoin? Fuck no. To be 100% very, very clear with you, no, not at all. But does that not mean that Bitcoin can't play out, you know, some significant downsides? Uh, well, of course not. <laughs> you know, of course not. Um, you know, Bitcoin can come all the way down to 40,000 bucks, 39,000 bucks. It doesn't mean all that much on the macro scale, to be fair. Uh, but looking at this right here, you know, I do think that this does this does show several signs of well caution. We'll say, uh, let's go check out on CME their closure on Friday, and what do you know? We got our secondary closure below the bottom side trolling band. Technically speaking, some people will call this an inverted hammer dildo or an inverted Jesus Christ dildo, and look for a bit of a bounce out of there. Again, I think that a bounce probably does happen from this region, but overall, it is pressure down. This is volume on the breakdown right here on the 12th of May. That was Thursday, and we do see that the ADX DMI is printing a fresh signal right here with the DMI minus being dominant. Technically, not having a positive slope but the next tick that it has a positive slope yes i'd be looking for a breakdown of this region and a trend below a short-term trend below the bottom side toronto band in this case we see momentum also is turning down with this as well daily smi having a bearish cross right there if it goes back down below the zero read right here that'd be another damn good signal especially when you're right at the precipice of your support with momentum turning down typically that is going to edge the odds and the and uh, you know on the side of a breakdown and same thing on daily macd as well over here too already crossing down below the zero read so it said that that's you know for a lot of people, that's going to be just enough already alongside the, uh, you know, alongside the ADX DMI and alongside the trolling bands here too. If we go over here to our regular charts, again, I wouldn't necessarily look for that next breakdown below 40,000 bucks, but if and when it does happen today, that is, or like tomorrow probably as well, but if and when that does happen below 40,000 bucks, next sort of, sort of targeted region is going to be the bottom side of this blue box territory right here. This can be about 45,000 bucks. I would be looking for another bounce there, potential reversal, but I, you know, if I'm just giving a general opinion here, what I think happens on Bitcoin is something similar to like 2013. I'm going to do something that I absolutely fucking hate. This, 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 this is bullshit what I'm about to do, but it is kind of fun to do as well. Where the fuck is that damn el ellipses thingy? Oh, motherfucker, man. I've forgotten how to do it. <laughs> People used to do this shit all the time on uh, crypto Twitter and it was absolutely hilarious. But now that I'm trying to pull it up, where the hell is it? I guess I can't pull it up. Motherfucker. Here it is. Found it. Uh, you know, I'd probably be looking for some like this you know something like this where bitcoin drops down here scares the shit out of everyone and then reaccumulates i don't know somewhere at the low forty thousand dollar region maybe upper thirty thousand dollar region playing out something relatively similar to what we saw back in 2013 way the fuck on over here where bitcoin essentially has a massive parabolic rally after a massive massive uh, multi-year long base over here and then it plays out about a half year to a year of sideways and down i mean this is a pretty you know significant down right here obviously i mean this is about a 50 54 I will just not say the numbers right now, but 54% down right there. And then eventually uh, actually continues on with the macro rally before putting in like a major actual bear market right here with a with a with a with a uh, concerted weekly downtrend. In this case over here, yeah, we do have a series of lower highs, yes, and we do have eh, I mean, this is kind of your low right here. So technically actually this did not enter into a downtrend on the weekly. This is your high, this is this is your uh this 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 is your lower high right here, and then this is your low, but there's no other lower low. So technically 
technically speaking, it never really entered into a downtrend. I'd probably be looking for the same thing over here as well. Now, where's our last weekly low? Well, you could make the argument that it was right here at about 45,000 bucks. Problem is, is that I actually don't think it's going to work like that unless you're on like a three day, but we're not talking about the fucking three day. We're talking about the weekly. So I did say that in the past. I'm going to be wrong. I, I'm, I, I would change my opinion about that. Uh, I do not. I, I would not agree with myself in the past. This is your last weekly though right here. Actually, you see a clear and obvious stop and reverse point. That's what I'm looking for for highs and lows. That's how I essentially identify them. And, uh, and I'd imagine how most people identify them. Um, so in this case right here, you know, to me, this is one major consolidation, a little bit of a complex top, if anything. And uh, and, if, and as long as Bitcoin just doesn't break below thirty-two thousand bucks, you do you do still have a thirty, uh, you do still have a weekly uptrend, and that has been the macro for Bitcoin. As long as Bitcoin is in a weekly trend, that is your direction for a very long time, typically speaking. So let's just play around with numbers here for a second. What if we just shave fifty percent off that price action? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> that would be right around the last prior uh, weekly higher low. Now, I'm not saying that Bitcoin's going to go down there. I just want to show that Bitcoin can very easily have some downside here. Um, and uh, and while it would certainly be concerning for a lot of people out there, uh, you know, understand that if you are a trader, that this you know should be should be looked at as an opportunity, if anything. Anyways, as it stands right now, we got the 200 simple and 200 exponential average kind of hovering around the low $40,000 region. That's an obvious bounce area as well, and perhaps reversal. Personally speaking, I do think that Bitcoin would probably bottom out somewhere right around here. Again, if and only if we get the breakdown condition, which first and foremost we need to see fucking $48,000 break, and that's not even the big one. It's $45,000 breaks breaking, and then yeah. I'd be looking for the next $5,000 flush. That's probably where we start to see a little bit of a cradling effect. And if we get some sort of uh, signatures of reaccumulation, that's at the point where I'd really start to say, okay, Bitcoin's probably going to create another major base from here, but it probably takes some time, man. You know, remember when we're looking at market cycles, just some general knowledge right here. Fuck, I already screwed up the goddamn time into this. We're already above 20 minutes. All right, I'll do my best to make this below 30 minutes. Then. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, but keep in mind over time, you know, market cycles will naturally get longer and longer. Why is that? Because there's more people invested in this asset. There's more people in the order books. There's more people representing or just presenting their potential trades. And that means that there's going to be more shit to just chew through. So price action will naturally move slower. Consolidations and market cycles become longer and longer over time to account for all of the people that, well, are, you know, in the market now in comparison to what was going on way the fuck back on over here. And there is an infinite amount of more people in this in this section over here than there was in especially like 20. 15, even 2018, 2019, especially as well. I'm sure people in this community all know that, you know, you've probably seen a lot of new faces uh, in this community. You've probably seen a, not, a lot of new content creators and shit like that too. And that is representative of, you know, the whole market. And in this case right here, you know, could it be relevant to say that Bitcoin maybe goes for like a half a year to a year of consolidation uh, after hitting this, you know, high after going 3x above its prior high and more importantly, going basically straight to the fucking moon from one year ago at 1650%. Yeah, I think that that's very reasonable, actually. Um, doesn't mean that it has to happen, but I think that it is very possible to happen. And we've been very, um, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, we've been very spoiled with these moves recently. I mean, <laughs> is this what happens all the time? No. If you've been around for the past few years here, you know that more often than not, things are consolidated. In fact, studies show that 70, I think it's even, it might be even closer to 80%, but I know it's it's at least above 70% uh, of the time things are consolidating, like an asset is consolidating, it's not trending. So in this case right here, I mean, we played out like, <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd go back out around here uh, to August and say that that was just straight, straight, straight shot to the upside from there. So that's almost what eight, nine months now. I think it's, I think it's closer to nine months. Um, so fair enough on that. You know, it, it very well could happen. So I do think that uh, this market probably gets a little bit boring and bores the shit out of people. Again, three day bounce off the 55. Uh, I get, uh, you know, another reason why I do think that Bitcoin bounces a little bit more from here. Um, but uh, but you can see the you can see the trend quite clearly on the three day. Here's your high. Here's your low. Here's your well. This this was your low prior. This is your high prior. So you got a higher high right here. You got a lower low right here in comparison to this one. So that is uh, danger time right there. And then you get your next lower high right here. We have a downtrend on the three day. Not present on the weekly just yet, but certainly on the three day. And looking at three day right now, we do see bearish divergence. We do see uh, weekly or sorry, not weekly, but three day jewel is giving a uh, gave a sell signal on the 13th to 16th of uh, of, of the past month and is now giving you a continuation haul to your short signal at least until the next fib which you know it's going to naturally move anyway so uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that price has to move in that direction right now but uh, but it would say that pressure is on right now. But this is all within the context of actually increasing volatility right here on the BBWP. So 
I'm a little bit concerned about this, actually. Uh, I, I do definitely think that Bitcoin could have some like actual downside here um, that would absolutely scare the shit out of people, uh, especially in this market. And you know, this market's fucking crazy right now, right? Like we're seeing plenty of like actual nonsense projects go not just to the moon, but like go more to the moon than Bitcoin go to the moon. We're talking about like <laughs> doggy coin going fucking what? Tens of thousands of percent. I don't know. Is it something like that? Kind of want to check in on it, but I, <laughs> I dare not. I think that we got the bounce up to the... Uh, uh, to, uh, to the 58 or 59 cent level uh, yesterday as we spoke about. So I would be a little bit cautious there too, to be fair. But uh, but overall, I mean, if you know, if Ethereum continues here, does DoggyCoin get another try as well? Probably does actually. Anyways, um, okay, cool. So let's go back down to lower term time frames here. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, let me throw them on. Hey, whoops, wrong chart. There we go. Okay, sweet. Let's see what a mental monster is saying right now. We do see four hour R size. Definitely under pressure here. Yes, um, no doubt about no doubt about that. You know, that's why I do say that it very likely could come back down and uh, and scrape around the current lows. Maybe put in a third drive of, of bullish evidence off that. That would be another obvious reverse short term reversal signal. That is. And again, I'd be I'd be having a short term target back up to about. 50 one three and then you know assuming that things take out there which i strongly think that it would i would i would be looking for a move towards 53. uh personally speaking do i think that bitcoin gets to 53 just sometime this next week probably yes um but again uh, that probably comes alongside of ethereum putting in like its next major rally um and uh or sorry fit you know fit, fit uh finishing off this current rally and uh and going into a little bit more of a consolidation so overall i, I do think it's time to be cautious here uh four hour tsi you know is very aggressive to the downside right now like this is very critical here and uh and i don't i i don't think it has the momentum to do it right now let's go over here uh perhaps and see what we got on our oh actually cme had a really fucking dastardly close on friday i mean this is how they closed on the lows essentially with all sorts of uh momentum also just turning down at the same time adx dmi macd and smi let's go over here to, to caretakers stc i got uh i got mr Beater up on it right now uh, would be showing uh, continuation basically to prior highs uh, with any sort of a closure above uh, 40 50 on the 12 hour by the way today uh, so i think that's a little bit relevant but what about bitcoin here what about bitcoin uh well it's a strong it's a bear zone strong falling trend and where does he show support he shows support at 45 actually on the 12 hour and uh and 42 on the daily which is rather nasty now the daily is a little bit a uh, little bit a little bit different in that case but what i do want to point out here is that four hour stokes are actually coming all the way up to the neutral zone with bitcoin ranging on the lows pretty much around the closing low basis from the last few four hour lows not the picture of health and fitness in this case here so uh you know i'm, I'm you know i'm not a huge fan of that right now uh but overall again i think bitcoin very likely rescrapes these lows around here might have already seen it right here i mean it's pretty fucking close anyways and then tries another rally from this region and then sometime next week uh maybe early next week somewhere around like 53 53 thousand bucks i'd be a little bit more cautious uh could it get higher than that yeah very uh, very well could i mean could it even reverse from there too i suppose there should always be a condition on the other side for getting bullish right and uh, i mean you know there has to be something that would tell me if i'm wrong and what would it be in this case i'd, I'd say back, back above the breakdown point right here at 56 uh, 7 or so uh, would be it for me but again you know what did we see on daily yesterday we saw daily turn down below on the tsi below the bearish buy zone that is we see daily rsi reaching for the bearish control zone once again now typically speaking your first test gets 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 easily rejected after not being there for a while this is not your first test though this is your <laughs> third test actually so again i'm starting to look at this as 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 as, as, a, as a lot more likely to break down over time Oh, and then we check out the Bitcoin Dominus chart, and we'll leave it at that. Oh, I might just make this below 30 minutes. Holy shit. Holy fuck. All right, we're down to 40 spot 69. Let's see where we are at. Let's see where we marked it off. Very close. Oh, actually, no, we are. Okay, very, very close. I do think it's going to make an, a spike into the, like the 3950, 39, what is it? Yeah, 3950 area, basically. Uh, but we're, we're so fucking close right there. So fucking close right there. And I would be looking for basically a pullback on the Bitcoin dominance here, implying that altcoins are going to lose versus their Bitcoin Satoshi parents. But still, just a little bit more similar to Ethereum over here, as we, identi uh, as we identified earlier with Ethereum Bitcoin pairing. Uh, looking at the weekly right here. It's very fucking close, extremely fucking close. And naturally speaking, these should kind of, you know, line up with each other more or less. Maybe not perfectly, but more or less they should. In this case, you do see that right there versus Bitcoin dominance right here. So I think we got one more slight leg down. 
like slight move down here and then and then bouncy bounce time uh which means that altcoin bitcoin parents probably gonna get smashed a bit but uh then again they've been doing the smashing ever since december of last year so it's been a pretty nice time for altcoins in general anyways i think that's i think that's about the time where i'm going to uh leave this one off i want to wish you well i need to go eat a shit ton of food and rejuvenate myself take care and see you soon